This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Hey, down up front. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics on iTunes, or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. The various TV networks recently held their archaic Upfronts event, where they try to sell advertisers on their new shows before they air, a.k.a. Upfront. It also means the networks made their final calls on which of their existing shows were renewed or canceled. So, let's start with that. ABC's cancellations. The Alec Baldwin Show, single season. Child Support, The Fix, single season. Dancing with the Stars Juniors, single season. Blech. For the People, The Kids Are Alright, single season, Speechless, Splitting Up Together, and Whiskey Cavalier, single season. Wait, that was a lot. Yeah. CBS cancellations were only Fam, and Happy Together, and Murphy Brown, all with a single season, and Life in Pieces. The CW cancellations, zero cancellations. Fox canceled The Cool Kids after one season, The Gifted, lethal, Lethal Weapon, the Passage after one season, Proven Innocent and Rel each after one season, and Star. NBC's cancellations, I Feel Bad, single season, Marlin, Midnight Texas, Trial and Error. I've never even heard of Marlin. It was on multiple seasons. <laughs> now some headlines from each network. On ABC, Modern Family was renewed for a final season. This is a show that has overstayed its welcome already. Dancing with the Stars will return with supposedly bigger celebrities. It would be hard to get smaller ones. Maybe taller ones. Maybe that's it. Bigger, taller. Yeah, and new twists. (laughs) Ugh. Constance Wu created a fuss when she expressed frustration that Fresh Off the Boat was renewed. She had some other project lined up that is now canceled. She was blasted online for her comments. Over at CBS, The Big Bang Theory completed its 12-year run. Young Sheldon will take over the coveted 8 p.m. Thursday slot. CBS is trying to dig out of the Les Moonves fiasco. They are also in the midst of a CBS news scramble with a new team on The Morning Show and Nora O'Donnell taking over Cronkite's old chair. Over on The CW, with zero cancellations, The CW is staying the course with more teen dramas and superheroes. Speaking of the latter, the annual Crisis crossover will run five hours and be spread across the holiday break. Over on Fox, this will be the first season post-Disney So Fox is going forward without a home studio for content, and their answer is sports. Terry Bradshaw put his foot in his mouth at the Fox Upfront presentation, referring to Kim Jong as the little short guy from Japan. Don't put Terry on a live mic. Over at NBC, Kenan Thompson will have two primetime TV series, but he's staying on Saturday Night Live, which gives you a good idea of his confidence in those new shows. NBC can look forward to the 2020 Summer Olympics for ratings. This Is Us got an unheard of three-year pickup. And Law & Order SVU becomes the longest non-Simpsons primetime scripted series. So now let's move over to the new series introduced at the upfronts. As always, you'll see Fill in the Blank returns to TV. There's a theme that the networks always fall into. Last year it was remakes, and this year it's Stability. Only 16 new fall shows over five networks and brand extension, spinoffs of existing series. Why? Because when most of your shows can't reach a full digit rating share, it's hard to justify replacing them with unknown quantities. And then there are stars who the networks insist we like over and over. For now, we're skipping shows announced for mid-season, as many of them may never make it to air. We may revisit them in a later episode. So, over at ABC, we have Mixed-ish. Black-ish has become the all in the family of the 21st century, cranking out spinoffs at a rapid rate. And this one is Young Sheldon meets Kimmy Schmidt, with Tracy Ellis Ross's character as a kid coming out of a commune slash cult adjusting to suburbia. Emergence is yet another thriller with a kid surviving a mysterious plane accident, and there's a conspiracy. Meh. But Manifest is still on NBC, so there is a market for this. I wouldn't be surprised if it took off. However, I won't watch it until there is at least a season in the can. Stumptown, Kobe Smulders returns to TV in a show based on a Greg Rucka P.I. graphic novel, 
which looks interesting, but it's paired with a set of family sitcoms, so I'm not hopeful. This really doesn't fit ABC's brand at all. On CBS, we have Bob Hart's Abishola. The Chuck Lorre joke machine rolls on. Billy Gardell returns to TV. He plays a cardiac patient who falls in love with his much younger black nurse. All Rise, a courtroom drama with a hint of picket fences. Lola Carmichael stars as a judge in a chaotic L.A. court system. And in The Unicorn, a widow, Walter Groggins, or I'm sorry, Goggins, gets back into the dating world with familiar names helping him out. Rob Cordray, Michaela Watkins. The show's name refers to a widow who's a devoted father and a nice guy, making him a hot commodity. Carol's second act. Patricia Heaton attempts the trifecta of hit shows, returning to TV, <laughs> Did She Ever Leave? Yeah. as a divorcee and empty nester who decides to become a doctor. Kyle MacLachlan also stars. And then there's Evil. The creators of The Good Wife go down the X-Files route with a skeptical female psychologist working with a team from the church investigating potential miracles, demons, and hauntings. Mike Coulter from Luke Cage and Michael Emerson from People of Interest co-star. Over on The CW, Nancy Drew, an edgy, sexy remake of the classic books and TV series with Kennedy McMahon, who apparently has no other credits, <laughs> as the girl sleuth. It's the CW, so there's teen drama and supernatural elements. It's also apparently going to tie into the Riverdale universe because it's, it's from the same producers. Any chance the Hardy Boys will show up? I can't wrap my mind around Nancy Drew and Archie in the same universe. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't work for me. <laughs> Meanwhile, Batwoman, Greg Berlanti finally figured out how to get around the no Batman rule. <laughs> Ruby Rose Pitt plays Kate Kane, a lesbian ex-military school student who decides to clean up Gotham in the absence of Bruce, her cousin. She was already introduced in the last CWDC show crossover. Rachel Scarston, who played Black Canary on the old Birds of Prey series, is the big bad. So let's switch over to Fox and Prodigal Son. A criminal psychologist, Tom Payne, has a unique perspective. His dad, Michael Sheen, was a serial killer, so he knows how killers think. Brought to you by Greg Berlanti's production company, Halston Sage from The Orville, and Bellamy Young from Scandal, co-star. And then you have Not Just Me. A fertility doctor, Timothy Hutton, personally fathers over 100 children. Brittany Snow is his daughter and reaches out to two of her sisters. They become a kind of family in this drama. Not This Is Us. Bless the hearts. Adding to Fox's Sunday animation domination what appears to be a King of the Hill-esque series with a North Carolina family struggling through life. Kirsten Wig, Maya Rudolph, Ike Barinholtz provide the voices, Emily Spivey, Phil Lord, and Christopher Miller are the execs. Then we have NBC with Bluff City Law. Jimmy Smits returns to TV in a legal drama. He co-stars with Caitlin McGee as father and daughter lawyers. He's conservative, she's progressive. This is a series from 20 years ago. <laughs> I was going to say, he's conservative, she's progressive, they're detectives. No, they're lawyers. <laughs> Perfect Harmony. Bradley Whitford returns to TV as an alcoholic ex-music professor who joins up with a small town church choir. Anna Camp co-stars in this comedy, so it's kind of like Glee in a church or Pitch Perfect, something like that. In Sunnyside, Cal Penn returns to TV. He's a former councilman who's busted for public intoxication who winds up helping dreamers become U.S. citizens in this Mike Schur based com in this Mike Schur comedy. But based on the trailer, I'm wondering if it will live up to his previous shows. We're willing to give it some time because, well, the good place. Right. <laughs> so it's another season coming up, but a season in which there's not going to be nearly as many new shows. No. And, and, it, and this is all a result of the the fracturing uh, audience right. to the point where why should we bother making a push for a new show when we've got when hardly anything makes a dent well, and, and we're taking a chance on something new. And fall TV um, doesn't really mean anything anymore right. with all the new shows being introduced, um, even on networks. 30 years ago, 20 years ago, networks wouldn't have spring shows no. that are as good as the spring shows they, that come out now. They, yeah, exactly. They were the ones that were like, okay, well, they're not good enough for fall. We'll give them a mid-season show. Yes, and now some of the mid-season shows are actually better than the, the fall shows. shows. Yeah. And then they have to compete with everybody else. And they have to compete with our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes. <laughs> or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. 
From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. 